In the previous video, I was talking about my cybersecurity course that I teach, and I was kind of comparing it to Google Cybersecurity Program and CompTIA Security Plus. And there's this guy in the comments who's like kind of making fun of me and saying my course is a scam. I get this guy is probably trolling, but actually there's quite a bit of stigma around buying courses from individuals and even small businesses and even colleges kind of like borderline getting called a scam these days. So I just kind of wanted to make a video to address these things. And I do want to say this video is not going to be me shilling my course or anything like this. I just want to give my perspective on this topic because I think it can help a lot of people. And as somebody who's bought thousands of dollars worth of online courses myself, I can definitely say that content from other creators and small businesses can definitely be life changing if you use it properly. So in this video, Video, just so you know what to expect, I'm going to talk about the strategy that I use to evaluate whether or not I'm going to spend money on some kind of educational content, whether or not it's a course or actual you know, education from university. I'm going to talk about five different online courses that I've bought, how much they cost and how they affected me in my career. And then finally, I'm going to very quickly directly address this viewer's comment. I'm going to talk about what my course is and how I want people to think about and use my course. And super quick, I'm going to be doing another cash giveaway with this video. So just check the pinned comment for details. So getting right into things, before you spend any actual real money on educational content, whether or not it's from a random YouTuber or it's from an actual college, it's really important for you to measure how much value you're going to be getting out of that education relative to the money that you're spending on it. Saying this out loud seems really obvious, but if you think about it, there are certain people out there who will spend 80 to 100k on some undergrad degree in communications. And then on the other side, there's definitely a lot of people who think a well-established course that costs a few hundred dollars is a complete scam just because it's being delivered by an individual and not like a large institution or a college or something like this. This topic is really, really important to me because investing yourself is one of the best things you can possibly do in your life, but you need to be really careful and strategic about it because you can either get a whole lot out of it or you can lose a whole lot. So you just need to be smart about the way you do it. A really fast and crude example of this is just imagine you're working part-time at McDonald's and you make about $15,000 a year. The first scenario being kind of a normie scenario, say you take that $15,000 and you simply invest it into the S&P 500. After a couple of years, best case scenario, you're going to end up with something like this. And then the second scenario, say you took that same $15,000, which is a lot for education, by the way, but just for this example, and you invested it into yourself in the most optimal way possible, it is completely possible after a couple of years, you end up making well over $100,000. So you could end up with some scenario that looks something like this. And then the third scenario, which is not great, it's completely possible for you to blow that 15K on some complete scam course, or go to undergrad for one year at a public university only to drop out and then be left with essentially nothing at the end. Just because you're spending a lot on education does not guarantee you're going to get a lot out of it. This applies to courses and then formal education as well. You just need to be really careful about how you use your money. And that begs the question, how do you even know what to spend your money on? And the answer might seem super obvious, but whether or not it's a course or college, you need to evaluate it and make sure it's economically sound. That is, you need to make sure the value you're getting out of it is much greater than the money and time you're putting into it, if that makes sense. And usually with educational products, the thing you're essentially spending your money on is some kind of information. And if you think about it, most information is basically free these days. For example, I teach two courses, IT and cybersecurity. All the information inside of those are, is technically free on the internet, right? You can just go out and get it for free. You want to learn everything you need to know for a nuclear engineering undergrad, that is also free. Just hit up ChatGPT, Google, you can pretty much find all of that for free. So that kind of begs the question, why even spend money on anything? Basically, the answer to this is reducing the amount of time and energy it takes you to achieve some kind of goal. Most courses offer information that's free, but ideally, they should like curate and organize the information in a way that's supposed to greatly reduce the amount of time and energy required for you to achieve your goal. That's what a good course should do. And as the person spending money on the course or education or whatever the case may be, it is your job to make absolutely certain of two things. The first thing being you need to make absolute sure that the thing you're considering spending money on actually provides some kind of value to you. 
This seems really, really obvious, but I get a lot of questions that indicate that people don't really think about this as much as they should. Either that, or they just don't know how to properly think about things holistically. So for example, say somebody already has a bachelor's degree in business, and they've been working as a business analyst for two years. They decide they want to get into IT, so they go, they go out and get another bachelor's degree in IT, and then start trying to apply for jobs. In reality, a double bachelor's degree doesn't carry that much weight in our industry at all, and the amount of time and money it takes to get another bachelor's degree is quite large right they could have taken that time and energy and they could have like gotten in better shape got a few certifications worked on their resume more did a whole bunch of projects for their portfolio they could have practiced interviewing in depth they could have done so many other things that would have provided so much more value than spending like another 10 or 20 or thirty thousand dollars in another couple of years on a bachelor's degree this is one of those scenarios where you don't get very much value out of what you put into it and then the second thing you need to make sure of after you've determined the thing that you're buying has some kind of value, you need to make sure that the purchase is going to be economically sound. A really simple way to think about this is, say the course you're considering buying costs $1,000, but it only saves you $100 worth of time. That's not being economically sound. Where on the other side, if the course costs $100, but it saves you $1,000 worth of time, that's considered economically sound. Like you're getting a lot more out of the course than what you're actually putting into it in terms of money anyway. And now you might be thinking to yourself, okay, like I know the course has value, but how can I be certain that the purchase is economically sound? And I will say that's, that's kind of up to you to determine, but there are some green flags that you can use to make sure that the course is quote unquote good. Some of the green flags are social proof, that is some other people have actually gone through the course and reviewed it and posted it online somewhere. I, I don't count social proof from the actual person who made the course to be legitimate social proof. I don't consider that social proof. And if there's negative social proof on the internet somewhere, that's definitely a red flag. But if you can find organic social proof, that's definitely a green flag. Another green flag is clear curriculum outline. Some courses, like for whatever reason, like obfuscate what they actually teach. Um, I don't really like that. That might not necessarily a red flag, but if there is a clear outline, that's definitely a green flag. If the course has clear pricing, it's like really obvious what you're going to pay for the course and you don't have to deal with a sales team like trying to like negotiate something with you. If the pricing is like really, you know, clear and apparent, I consider that a green flag. And then the last green flag I'll talk about is some kind of refund policy is like built in. Like if the course doesn't deliver in like 14 days or they have like, you know, a week or two week, no questions asked refund policy, I kind of consider that uh, a green flag. So getting into some of the courses that I've personally purchased, how much they cost and how much they've helped me in my career. The first one is Graham Stephan's YouTube Creator Academy. Graham Stephan is another YouTuber, and this course basically teaches you how to do YouTube from like the thumbnail to editing to like posting schedule, like pretty much everything. I learned this the best I could and I implemented and I executed on it the best that I could. And in the end, I was able to grow my YouTube to what it is today. It cost $400 and I think I got it for half off from some Black Friday deals. That's the first one. The second product slash course I purchased is Algo Expert. This is from another YouTuber, Clem Mihailescu. He's a software engineer slash entrepreneur. And I use this product. Basically, it teaches you um, some advanced programming skills like data structures and algorithms. I executed on this product so hard. I didn't even finish all of it. Maybe I finished like a third of it or something like this. And I was able to pass some tech technical coding interviews at Google, Amazon, and Tenable. And for $90, I think this product was like so good actually, but you need to have good execution to take full advantage of it. So that's the second one. The third course I wanna talk about, this one was $1,100. It's called Offensive Security Pen Testing with Kali Linux. This is the program that helps you to get the OSCP certification. I didn't even get through like half of this course before my time ran out and I didn't get the certification either, but I learned a lot in this course. It really solidified the idea of like vulnerabilities and exploits and it helped me talk really intelligently in interviews. And I actually ended up getting my first cybersecurity job because I, I went through at least part of this course. So I would say it was worth it. It's like a, a bit expensive, but it ended up being worth it to me in the end. The fourth program I wanna talk about is Code with Mush. Uh, he is a YouTuber as well he has a lot of subscribers and i actually purchased a whole bunch of coding courses from him including like python javascript node.js react i just purchased most of those and i didn't finish all of them but i would say probably more than half and i definitely got my money's worth out of these because i made a lot of projects with these courses they helped me to speak really intelligently about full stack development and i actually got my first 
um, security analyst job at Microsoft based on projects that I did in this course. So de definitely worth the money. They're like 30 bucks each, but seriously, this is like probably one of my favorite creators. And the last one was exploit development by eLearn Security. I think this course was around a thousand dollars. And I think I've I finished like 10% of this course, to be honest. And what I got out of this course is I learned that I don't really like doing exploit development very much, like offensive security and exploit development. Um, I was considering doing a PhD program for cyber operations, and I wanted to kind of prime myself for it because it was a lot of exploit development and offsec in that in that degree program. And after taking this, I was like, I don't care about this at all. So I stopped doing the course and I actually stopped my application to the PhD program. And I'm kind of glad I did it because I learned what I didn't like to do. And I saved myself, you know, tens of thousands of dollars of not enrolling in this PhD program. So that's kind of what I got out of that one. It's a bit unexpected, but it, it kind of helped me nonetheless. So all these courses considered is about $2,700 and some S tier execution on my part. I was able to improve my career like quite a bit. I got a couple of jobs as a result of these courses and I learned a lot about myself and I just got a lot of skill in general. So I'd say it's like really, really worth it. And if you compare this about $2,700 with the average cost at a public university, it's less than a single quarter of of college, right? And I can't, in my opinion, having gone to college quite a bit, I can't even compare the value between the two. The courses, well, I granted that I picked proper courses and I executed on them really, really well. The value is way more than just like kind of your average college quarter, if that makes sense. It's just really, really important for you to remember those two things, like make sure there is value and make sure it's like economically sound. And then the third thing, if you execute on the thing that you purchased really, really hard, more than likely the outcome is going to be good, you know, especially assuming all of the green flags are there. And finally, I want to address this viewer's comment as well as talk about how I want people to think about and use my course. I'm not going to talk about everything that's in my course. If you're curious about it, you can watch this video. But if you go through my course and do everything that I recommend, you're going to end up with quote unquote stats that look something like this. And in particular, there's an optional component of the course that if you decide to do it, you'll be granted a title and experience for my company. And the whole reason I created this component was to help solve the Catch-22 problem in the cybersecurity industry of needing experience in order to get experience, and it's literally working. So getting into how I want people to think about and use the course, it's true that like a certification is rewarded at the end of the course, but I don't even care about that certification, and neither should you, because in terms of like being a certification, it doesn't really provide that much value. Like, oh, I went through leveled cybersecurity course. Oh, I went through like Josh's cybersecurity course. This, this in and of itself, like it doesn't really provide much value. So I don't, I don't even talk about it. I don't even use that as a selling point. And I, I don't like when people ask me if my course has a certification either, because I don't want other people to think about it like that. For people who go through my cybersecurity course from the employer's perspective, they shouldn't even know that you went through a course at all. All they should see is like a super squared away individual that has their shit together that's going to be a good worker. That's all the employer should see. In fact, like marketing and all of that aside, I don't even really want the employer to know that you went through the course. I just want them to see like a super distinguished, self-sufficient security professional who's doing what it takes to get hired. Like that's all I want the employer to see. Thanks for watching.